Welcome back to the weekly Warrior Rundown for the week of Monday, December 7th. I'm Colleen Miron, joining the crew today, back with Matt Gagnon and Mike Legage. We have a lot to talk about today. Let's get right into it. First on the list is Merrimack Men's Hockey. Um, they had a big upset this weekend, with losing the first game, but coming back and winning the next game at, ho at home at Lawler Rink. Um, Matt, what are your comments on that? Uh, that was a huge win for Merrimack Hockey. I think... Um, if you watched their first game of the season, it might have been a little um, intimidating to watch just because, I mean, they they dominated, especially in the first two periods by UMass. Um, but people forget that UMass had had like four games, I think, before them, and Merrimack only had like four practices. Um, so being able to win the second night and splitting the season – or splitting the series, sorry, was, was pretty big. All right. Uh, well, I was going to say that I think Merrimack's looking really good. I think that they put themselves in a good position to be successful because they beat, they split a series with a ranked opponent, and I believe they're playing Northeastern next, another ranked opponent. And I'm, obviously we'd hope that they would win both games this time, but even just splitting again would be a great step in the right direction. So it's really positive to see. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, next on the list, we have Merrimack men's basketball. However, that's a little bit more negative because unfortunately their games are postponed and they are not starting their season until 2021. Um, I hope that they can keep practicing during this time and be in the best shape and be ready to head into the season. Um, Matt, what do you think about that? This has got to be tough for these kids because they, they had a great first season as a Division One team. And people were probably looking forward to seeing them on the court again and seeing what they were going to do in their second season, which, I mean, arguably would be a more important season to see. Was it beginner's luck or are they a skilled team? And they were looking to come out here and show them, like, we're the real deal. Um, so I'm sure they'll use this time to keep practicing and keep, um, like, team bonding, too, is huge. Um, but, I mean, I don't know what you think about it, Mike. Well, I was going to say, first off, I think that they, the NCA has to get rid of that transition period rule because during during the March March Madness last year where they were thinking about, you know, like the bracketology stuff where they show, oh, this team might make it. Merrimack had a chance to beat in March Madness. And I know as a as a student, I'll never get to see, a, you know, a March Madness game, or at least from Merrimack. But I mean, at least, at least I get to see – a very successful basketball team, built off a great season they had last year. They were so much fun to watch. I call back to that Army game when Army came to uh, Merrimack. That was one of the greatest, you know, crowd atmospheres I've ever been a part of. You know, we were, you know, we were rowdy against the coach, against the players. You know, it was just, just a great time. And I look forward to them having another great season when they do get back to it this year. Yeah, I completely agree. I was actually lucky enough to sit on the sideline for that game. And I was working the replay camera. And that was an intense game to be a part of. And I was very happy to be a part of it. And I'm really looking forward to their season getting started. Um, up next, let's take a look over at some professional sports. So the Patriots, man, they suffered a really tough loss. Um I know you're a big fan, Matt. I don't know how you're feeling about that one. What do you think? All right, so we're forgetting that they still beat the Chargers the week before by 45. But, yeah, the game against the Rams was tough. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to, like, hate on Cam Newton yet. I think he's a good quarterback. I just think that he's kind of a head case. And, I mean, he had an interception on a screen pass that was just, like, awful. I mean, he just, like, lobbed it to someone else. Um I forget who intercepted it, but um, at this point, I feel like, I mean, give Stidham some reps because Stidham's been getting more and more reps in the end of the fourth quarter, and it's getting earlier and earlier that Cam Newton's getting pulled, and I just feel like give the guy some chance because he's younger. He's, I don't know. I mean, at this point, what do you have to lose? Well, I was going to say, you were trying to say that the Chargers – 45 to zero win was a good win, but the Chargers are three and nine. And also the coaching difference in that game has been talked about significantly. Anthony Lynn is the Chargers head coach and Bill Belichick is obviously the Patriots head coach. I think that was a huge mismatch, but back to the topic at hand, I think you, Matt, you and I were talking the other day, you said that Matt Stafford could potentially be the Patriots quarterback or he would be a great 
a good idea. And I think that I actually like that idea because I believe Matt Stafford deserves a win in his career because he's just been kind of wasting away in Detroit. And even not as the biggest Patriots fan in the world, I would like to see that come true. But then we look at, so what the Patri- what should the Patriots do for the rest of the way? Should they embrace the tank, do you think? Or do you think that they should try to hunt for a playoff seed? I don't think that Belichick would ever embrace a tank. And even if, even if they got a top five pick even, unless there's someone really special, I wouldn't be surprised if they traded away for a lower pick and get like a solid um, – at least like three, four year um, vet in their, in their roster. Um, I just don't see him ever taking a top five pick unless it's like literally Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, but I don't ever see them embracing the tank. Just the last little bit on that topic. How do you guys feel about the Patriots coming, the next game coming up against the Dolphins being the record of the Dolphins is higher right now that are more that more wins right now than the Patriots I believe um what do you guys feel about that game coming up bad (laughs) I hate to say that but like I feel like the Patriots with Brady and Gronk and Edelman split the series against the Dolphins half the time and right now when they are so hit or miss I don't know if they're going to be able to beat a rolling Dolphins team uh, do we know if that game is in Miami or in uh, Foxborough? Oh, okay, then I would say the Dolphins will take that one. Yeah. The Patriots don't travel well to Miami typically. But especially the oh, I still wouldn't be surprised if the Patriots were to win that game just because I feel like it's a game that they need to win. And the Dolphins – well, the Dolphins need to win it too, though. Exactly. I think both teams are going to come in fighting yeah. for it for sure. All right, well, that is it for our – topics of the day um let's head into the our after show is there any other comments about what else is going on right now um other big things going on in the sports world world in general um i know the nba preseason is starting and also um the nhl is starting to talk about what they're going to do for their season i've heard a lot about 56 game season so obviously a shortened season, and then I think they're switching up the divisions. It's going to be like an all-Canadian division, and then Northeast, Southeast, or South pretty much, because there's not a whole lot of Southeast teams, and then West. So they're switching up the divisions a lot. Is that just to like limit travel? Or? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And then something I want to bring attention to is the Army-Navy game. Uh, going on today it's being it's actually being played at army for the first time in a while or or ever i'm not too sure about that but they're doing that because it's usually a neutral site game but they're doing it at at army because it allows them to have the students in the uh you know in the stands and personally as a sports fan who's missed having you know having a crowd at games and it's just like i'm really excited just to watch that because uh, the atmosphere has been – anyone who's watched sports knows that it's tough to watch sports without fans in the stands because you can hear them flooding in the crowd noise. And like, oh, wait, are the people there? No, there's, it's just noise. It's all fake, yeah. Yeah, so, but I'm, I'm really excited for that. And I also can't wait for you know, fans to actually be allowed in every game once again. But hopefully we'll get there soon enough. Absolutely. Well, we have a lot to look forward to. And I know that we will see great things coming forward from some professional sports and Miramax sports as well. Um, However, taking a turn, I want to talk a little bit about the COVID vaccine that we have seen. Um, It is now being ready for distribution, I believe, throughout the United States um, and other countries as well. Um, Do you guys have any comments on that? How do you feel about the vaccine coming forward right now? Ugh, excited and hopeful. I mean, if this is what it takes to get world back to normal and fans back in sports games and everything, just like, I'll, I'll oh, I'm so excited. But I don't want to get my hopes up too high because I know that we're probably not going to be the first ones to get it. Um, and obviously, give it to the the higher risk people first. 
and then move down. But I'm hoping that at least by next fall, we'll be good to go. Yeah, I completely. Yeah, I would. I would. I would definitely hope that this will make you know this will start phasing us towards you know what we think is a normal life where we're able to go outside you know not have to wear masks everywhere. But I'm I'm hopeful. I know there's a lot of people that are skeptical about it that maybe think it was rushed or you know that it's going to cause side effects. But I I trust that you know it'll at least you know it'll at least be effective and hopefully get us back towards a normal life. Absolutely, I agree. I was doing a lot of research on it a little because I've heard a little bit of skepticism myself around it and just the fact that it did come out so quick. But I've seen that they had been working on other vaccines of similar natures in like 2005. I think 2013 was the other year. So that's why the production was able to happen so quickly and they were able to produce this vaccine and get it out there. Um, like you guys said, I'm really hopeful myself and really looking forward to normal life, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to go through a little bit of a new normal. I'm sure masks will still be around for some time, but at least we are making progress and taking a step in the right direction. Um, I think that's it for today, though, guys. Um, thank you for joining me. Once again, I'm Colleen Miron here with Matt Gagnon and Mike Legage. And stay tuned for the next weekly Warrior Rundown.